Welcome to our service for Trinity Sunday here at Christ Church Beeford. Uh, the Reverend Kathy Miller is on vacation, uh, and uh, some of us in the congregation are filling in. Uh, so please uh, follow along with the service uh, as we go. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Almighty God, to you, to you all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, and, and from you, you no secrets, secrets are hidden. Cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And 
Christ is beside me. He, he walked through the dark to scatter new light. Yes, Christ is alive and beckons his people to hope and to hear. And invite. Today I affirm the Spirit within me that worship and work in struggle and rest. The Spirit inspires a life which is changed. Fearing to faith, from broken to blessed. Today I enjoy the Trinity round me, above and beneath, before and behind. The Maker, the Son. me to life and call me their friend. O oh God, as the showers renew the earth, bathe us in your healing power. Stretch out your hand that we may live and know that you alone are God, in whose faithfulness we have life all our days. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. 
and let them, be, let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And the stars... God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food." and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens, and the earth when they were created. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our psalm for this service is Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? 
mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fishes of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the seas, O Lord, our sovereign, how magic, majestic is your name in all the earth. And our second reading is from 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And And also also with with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I am very honored to once again serve as a homilist in Reverend Kathy's absence. As she takes some time off, I understand to do some gardening. I have to say that it was some trepidation when I discovered I had to prepare a homily for this Trinity Sunday service. I recognize the challenge of explaining the Trinity expressed by a number of ministers over the years, and all those members of the clergy, men and women with years of training in theology, 
and many years of experience preparing sermons about the Trinity. I have many years of experience working in horticulture and proud of my knowledge of plants, so I thought maybe I should have leave the preparation of this homily to someone else, and my time might be better spent assisting Kathy in her garden, or for that matter, in my own garden. However, here I am, and hopefully my thoughts will have some meaning and therefore some value. And to add to my challenge, the first reading is from the chapter of Genesis, the story of creation. The simple statement that God created the heavens and the earth has got to be one of the most challenged concepts confronting our modern minds. Just how did God create the earth? This is an ongoing debate. There is the Big Bang Theory, a sudden explosion, and our universe appeared. Some suggest God started the process and the universe evolved over billions of years. And many scientists have differing opinions on the origin of the universe. There always seems to be more questions than there are answers. Almost every ancient religion had its own story or theory to explain how the earth came to be. But only the Bible shows one supreme God creating the earth out of his great love and giving all people a special place in it. There's always a part of us that would like to say, we've got God figured out. We like to think that the world might be a simple place, but that's not how creation works. Just as there are many diverse theories and opinions, we actually experience diversity in creation. We know the vastness of the world around us, and we look beyond our little corners. Yet with ever-expanding and developing of new technology, we often find our world appears to be shrinking. Possibly less significant when we attempt to understand the expansiveness of the universe. I don't know about you, but with discoveries of black holes and evidence of other galaxies occurring at ever increasing speed, it's too much for my mind to comprehend. So when I think about it, I realize that God must be larger than any statement we can make about God. In fact, God is so vast and so beyond any comparable. I find it difficult to discover words that exist capable of fully describing God. I read that all language about God is ultimately metaphorical. So, if simple metaphors in describing the Trinity fall short in finding the Trinity, and if the Trinity is still a metaphor, how do we understand it? So I found it interesting in reading today's Gospel from Matthew that is really about Jesus' final words, his final instructions to his disciples. It is the last of these that we are thinking about today, what is often known as the Great Commission. These are the final words of Jesus to his disciples before he ascends to heaven. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What is significant to note for our purpose today is the importance of the how that is involved here. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those are the words that are used still today. The words we hear at every baptism. It is not in the names of the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit, is it? This, of course, is what is known as the Trinity. In researching this topic, I found this analogy. Now, I've never been great with numbers and mathematics. It was always a challenge until I discovered applied math in my post-secondary education. But this description was in the form of an equation. One plus one plus one equals one. I know by simple arithmetic this cannot be right, so it can further confuse the understanding of Trinity. So, simply put, Trinity is God. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Trying to explain the Trinity with metaphors, I think, can only further confuse us. 
Many of the explanations cause more confu confusion than clarity. Today, in the church calendar, we celebrate Trinity Sunday. And as I discovered, what makes it unique is that among all the feast days of the church, it is the only feast devoted to a doctrine. A doctrine presented by our Lord and agreed upon throughout the history of the church. We are the people of God. We worship one God. We talk about God, think about God, and refer to God as Trinity, three in one. But there is another important message in today's gospel, in Christ's commission to his disciples. Jesus told his disciples to make more disciples as they preached, baptized, and taught. With this same authority that exists today, we are commanded to spread the good news to others, and as they believe, make them disciples. We Anglicans are often not comfortable with campaigns that serve as recruitment of new members, sometimes referred to as evangelism. But I like to think here at Christ Church Anglican in Meaford, as we look forward to returning to worship together in person, hopefully sooner rather than later, and as we plan for whatever lies ahead, that we will continue to serve this community and so to grow. That our friendly, kind, and welcoming atmosphere throughout our outreach programs and other in community involvement will assist in making more disciples. We read about the decline of churches across the Western world. The only churches that are seeing growth in their numbers apparently are those that have clear mission strategies for making disciples. These are difficult times, and many of the changes we are experiencing, we are told, could become permanent. The new normal. There are people that are looking and will be looking for solutions, for answers. When people come to church for the first time, they will be looking for something special, possibly something different. People will not be attracted to church if it does not meet their needs seven days a week. People are not looking for a social group or a concert show. That is available in other venues. People will be attracted by who we are. People need to find welcome and kindness and need to know that although we are from, far from perfect, we are disciples on a journey. We are heading in the right direction with God, and we welcome and encourage all to join us. Let our song be heard in the words of Bishop Gordon Light. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Amen. Let us affirm our faith, saying together, We are, we are not alone. alone. We, we live in God's world. world. We, we believe, believe in God, God who has, has created and is created, created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made, made flesh, flesh, to reconcile and make, and make new, new, who works, works in us and others by the Spirit. Spirit. We, we trust, trust in God. God. We, are we are called to be the Church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, Lord, hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from, from the time of trial and, and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Wherever you are, I invite you to prayer. Bound together in Christ, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to our God, saying, Holy Trinity, hear us. That the love which passes ceaselessly between the Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each Christian and draw us all gathered here into your unending life. We pray, Holy Holy Trinity, Trinity, hear hear us. For the leaders of the church, and most especially we pray for Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Mark, National Indigenous Bishop, Todd, our Bishop, Graham, our Archdeacon, and Kathy, our incumbent. And for the leaders of the nation, and most especially for Justin, our Prime Minister, that they may discern the ways to overcome divisions and mistrust, and may reflect your unity in every aspect of common life. We pray, Holy Holy Trinity, Trinity, hear hear us. us that your self-disclosure in Christ and your enduring presence among us as spirit may help us to understand both you and ourselves made in your image and likeness. We pray, Holy Holy Trinity, Trinity, hear hear us. For our families, our households, and our communities, that they may be places of communion and mutual support which build us up and strengthen us in grace and truth. We pray, Holy Holy Trinity, Trinity, hear hear us. us. Thankful for our world which you made through Christ and renewed in the power of his resurrection, that we may be wise and careful stewards of creation, we pray, Holy Holy Trinity, Trinity, hear hear us. In the power of that spirit, who joins our prayer to Christ's enduring intercession. We pray for the sick, the suffering, and and all of those who stand in need. And for healing and hope this day, we hold up to God, Andrea, Harold, John, Ruth, Simon, Tyler, and any others known to ourselves that we may wish to name silently or aloud at this stage. Bill. And for healing all the world, we pray, Holy Holy Trinity, Trinity, hear hear us. us. And in our cycle of prayer for this week, we hold in our prayers the people in the clergy of St. Jude's Church, Mount Bridges, St. Andrew's Church, Muncie, Zion Church, Oneida, and in our own parish, Mary Johnson, Sherry Karchner, Shirley Keevney, and all their families and for all those serving in the Canadian forces at home and abroad. We pray, Holy Holy Trinity, Trinity, hear hear us. us. And I want to share with you a prayer that Bishop Todd sent to us and to all the parishes in the diocese yesterday. As part of our baptismal covenant, Anglicans promise to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Keeping with this covenant, the Diocese of Huron is committed to social justice, equity, and anti-racism. We believe, as stated in a Charter for Racial Justice in the Anglican Church of Canada, that one of our strengths as a church lies in our diversity and in our commitment to eliminate systemic and individual racism, whether intended or not recognizing the Anglican Church's own history of complicity in racial oppression and injustice, especially against indigenous peoples and communities. We affirm our commitment to anti-racism, to racial justice, and to working towards equity in our churches, our communities, our country, and our world. And as we reflect on our own role in systemic oppression, We repent of the sin of racism and pray for truth, for justice, for reconciliation, for peace, 
for both those who are oppressed and those who oppress. Gracious God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, accept our prayers this day by the inner workings of your Spirit, deepen our communion with you, the source and goal of our life, and make us more and more signs of your enduring love. This we pray through Christ, who lives and works with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Yeah. Draw, the sun. draw the circle wide, draw it wider still, let us be our song, no one stands Side by side, draw the circle wide. On the still point of the circle, round whom all creation turns, nothing lost but hell forever in God's gracious eye. Draw the circle wide. Wider still, let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Let our hearts touch far horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no borders, faithful to. Oh, draw the circle wide, draw it wider still, 
Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle wide. Let the dreams we dream be larger than we've ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ in us open every door. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. finish our service for today, we want to do it with a tribute to one of our very dear parishioners who passed away earlier this week. She was an incredible member of our parish. She sang in our choir, she edited our tidings, she proofed all of the bulletins that came out. Leslie Kenyon was an incredible support for Christ Church. But in addition to that, she was an incredible support for our whole community. She was on the Meaford Auxiliary, Hospital Auxiliary. She was with the Meaford and Culture Foundation. She was with the Scarecrows. There wasn't anything in our community that she didn't have a part behind the scenes, and sometimes out in front with the, doing work with the Scarecrow Parade. It's with great sadness that we lose her, but we remember all of the wonderful things that she did with us here in our community. And we'd like to finish today by singing one of her favorite hymns, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. <laughs> 